This next video is going to focus on the heat of vaporization equation. So we have Q equals mHV. Again, if you could look at the back of your reference table to see where this equation is coming from, it tells you that m is the mass, it tells you Q is the heat, it tells you that HV is heat of vaporization. Also remember to check out table B on the front of the reference table. It tells you the value for heat of vaporization for water is 2,260 joules per gram. So as long as we're talking about water, we can come there and check that out and we don't have to memorize it, which is pretty nice. Okay, so last video we talked about this equation, Q equals mHf. The heat is equal to the mass times the heat of fusion for this lower plateau. In this video, we're going to look at this higher plateau. So Q equals mHv. So when you see a problem that's related to heat of vaporization, they're going to use words that are describing this plateau. Well, what could we say about this plateau? We're going from a liquid to a gas, so you have liquid and gas in equilibrium. We are at the boiling point, so they might mention, okay, boiling point in the question. If it's water, they might mention that you're at 100 degrees Celsius or 373K, or they might mention the name of the phase change. They could say vaporization. They could say evaporation. The question could also say that you have water and steam, liquid and gas, if we're talking about a substance. We're looking at our cooling curve over here. They might mention the words or the word condensation because you're going from a gas to a liquid. Um, they could also, again, this would be represented as the boiling point, the temperature at which this is occurring. So anytime you see any of these words to describe this top plateau, we're going to use the Q equals mHV equation. So the heat of vaporization is how much heat it takes to take a certain mass of a substance and convert it from the liquid to the gas phase or the vapor phase, or from the vapor phase to the liquid phase. So it corresponds to both parts on the chart. And remember that we have these values 2260 just for water. OK, so let's go through some calculations for heat of vaporization problems. First question, how many joules? When you see the word joules, we're always going to annotate and write heat or energy. Are required to vaporize. That's a clue in the problem. Vaporize 423 grams of water. OK, we're talking about water 100 degrees Celsius. I would write, this is the boiling point of water. And if it's water, then we can use table B because it gives us certain values. So we have our equation Q equals mHv. Since the question is asking for how many joules, and we wrote that that's the Q, Q is our x. So it's equal to the mass. We underline grams because that's the unit for mass. 423 grams times the heat of vaporization, which we could find on the front of the reference table, 2,200 joules per gram. We plug that into our calculator. And we get 955,980 joules because we were calculating the heat. Next question. How much heat will be released? Released, we could annotate that. We know what the release means. Whenever you see released, you should think releasing heat is exothermic. We're talking about our cooling curve then. When 65 grams, grams is a unit of mass, of ethyl alcohol, Okay, see how they give you a heat of vaporization? Yes, because it's not water, so we can't use table B. So no table B here. Changes from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So if I'm thinking about my chart, I'm thinking, okay, I have my heating curve, I have my cooling curve. They say I'm going from a gas to a liquid. I'm talking about this point on the graph, this higher plateau. So I'm going to use the Q equals mHV equation. So we plug our values in. We have 65 grams, and we have a heat of vaporization here of 855 joules per gram. Your grams will cancel out, and you're left with uh, 55,575 joules. Lastly, I just wanted to mention that when we're looking at the heat of vaporization or on any heating curve or cooling curve, you may have noticed that the heat of vaporization has a longer line than the heat of fusion line. So here's our heat of fusion. Here's our heat of vaporization. And that's because it takes more energy to overcome the attractions to go from a liquid to gas 
than it does to go from a solid to liquid. So when you're looking at going from a solid to liquid, you're just taking your particles and spreading them out slightly. But when we're going from a liquid to gas, they really have to separate. So a lot of energy is going to be required. So there's going to be stronger intermolecular forces of attraction with a higher value for heat of vaporization. So if we have a question that asks which one has the strongest intermolecular forces, and we give you different values for the heat of vaporization, the one that took the most energy to overcome those forces of attraction, what we would could say, are the strongest.